Alright guys, so we're back at it again. Sorry for the delay, I've been uh, busy working on a bunch of customer repairs at their own home, so, you know, I don't bring the camera when I do anything like that. But, we're going to be starting a few videos here. There's going to be more than one video. It's all going to be about CRT monitors. Um, I'm not like an expert on CRTs. I know just enough to kind of like fix them. <laughs> As you can see, this one's got some issues. Now, that little like white bar wavy line that you see kind of going diagonally here, that's not the issue. That's just the refresh rate on my camera. So don't worry about that. But this waviness that's going from side to side, that is one of the issues we're gonna work on. And of course, as you can see, we need to adjust the horizontal as well but before we can do any of that stuff you got to learn how to safely test voltages on the flyback transformer and also how to discharge a CRT safely and in this video that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna show you how to test the high voltage coming off let's get down a little low so you can see a little better the high voltage transformer right there, okay? And right up in here. Because you don't test it from the transformer itself. You test it from this suction cup here, which is also known as the anode. Alright? And the voltage is going to depend on the size of your monitor, ultimately. Uh, this one, I don't remember the voltage off the top of my head. I'd have to dig in a little deep and kind of figure it out. But I believe it's somewhere around like, I don't know, 18 to 22,000 volts, something in that area. A lot of these monitors can reach up to 30,000 or more volts, which is more than enough to actually do serious harm to you or even just kill you. So you need to be really careful with this. But what I'm going to do is set you up on the tripod. And then I'm going to show you how to test, sorry, how to test the high voltage coming into the CRT tube through that anode right there. All right. And after that, I'm going to show you how to safely discharge it. I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can actually do the discharging. And uh, yeah, there's so many different ways to do that, and I'll explain that a little bit later. But I'm going to set you up on the tripod, like I said. And I'll show you how to go ahead and test it, then I'll show you how to discharge it, and we'll take it from there. Alright, we'll be right back. Alright, so we're back, and we got you all set up on the tripod. Um, something I didn't mention before was what this monitor is. This here is a Wells Gardner K7000 okay um, and like I mentioned before I don't remember what the high voltage rating for this is I think it's between 18 and 22,000 I'm not quite sure it's probably less than that to be honest with you but the purpose of this video is just to show you how to safely test the high voltage and then safely how to discharge the CRT so you don't hurt yourself um, the issue that's currently going on with this particular CRT, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, it, I've already replaced the capacitors on this monitor a long time ago. This has been sitting on my shelf, and now I've decided it's time to maybe dig into it more and see what's going on. But we'll worry about that later on. The first thing I want to show you is what I'm using to test the high voltage. And you can't use your standard multimeter or anything like that it's gonna fry if you do that and probably hurt you too you need a high voltage probe all right what i'm using is an old school b and k hv30 high voltage probe this comes with a detachable voltmeter now, this particular high voltage probe only goes up to 30,000 volts. Uh, you can get probes that go up much higher than that. Again, some CRTs are going to go higher than 30,000 volts. I don't work with CRTs currently. 
that go higher than that. The most common ones are going to be these little 19 inches and 13 inches that I work with. So this is more than enough. The key thing to know is when you're using one of these high voltage probes, on one end of your wire, it's just a gator clip. And this gator clip goes right to the chassis frame of your monitor. The reason being, this chassis frame is hooked up to the field ground. All right? The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the silver tip of the probe here and you're going to literally put it underneath this suction cup and right inside up to the uh, anode hole. All right? Now, before you do that, I want to note that on the anode here, it's a little hole with kind of like a Y-shaped clip. You're going to see it after we discharge this and I take the anode off. But basically, when you put this probe up in there, you want to be careful not to undo it, especially when the monitor is running like it is right now. Because if you do that, you're going to have a really bad day and you're going to regret it. Trust me. Um, by the way, these probes, this particular probe, it's a really old school one. I got it from my dad after he passed away. Uh, they go for about 75 bucks on eBay. You can get other probes that go with higher voltages and they can go for 100 to 300 dollars. So just keep that in mind. I actually have two of these probes. It's pretty cool. One of them is a working probe, which is this one. The other one is actually a busted probe because I stupidly tried to test it on a CRT in the arcade I worked for years ago that I, I must have hooked it up wrong or something because I fried it. I just absolutely fried it. But anyway, let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing here. So, we have our meter that's going to tell us what our voltages are. What we're going to do is we're going to take our probe and we're going to very carefully go underneath and we're going to touch the anode there. We're actually quite high. Way too high for this monitor. We're at 30 plus thousand volts. I mean, I could be wrong. This monitor might be okay at 30,000, but I have a good feeling that this is not supposed to be like that. So I'm going to have to do more research when it comes to the actual repair. If any of you guys have any good clues on this one, go for it. Let me know. Because again, I'm not 100% sure what's wrong with this. I'm just showing you how to actually test them in general. So yeah, we're at 30,000. We'll go ahead and take that off. You can see it drop down. We'll try it one more time just to make sure. Yep, we're at 30,000 volts on this. So I have a good feeling that that's way too high. And that's probably going to end up being our actual wavy or like ripple kind of issue that we got going on. We may end up needing a new high voltage transformer or flyback. We may have another issue going on that's causing this thing to spike as high as it is. So, now that you know how to test these properly, I'm going to go ahead and get my broken probe. And with my broken probe, I'm going to show you how you can discharge this. By the way, I decided I'm not going to show you the other two ways that you can discharge a CRT. And the reason being is it works for me. I've actually never had an issue, but it's not safe to do. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. I do it, and I probably shouldn't, but it's a risk I'm taking personally. And I'm not going to show that on video just for the fact, like, if somebody else does it and they get hurt, I mean, I'm going to feel terrible because I've seen people get hurt doing it my method and I've just been lucky. So I'm just going to show you the way that I uh, do it with my broken high voltage probe. And what I mean by broken is the meter itself doesn't read anything, but it has perfect connection from the tip all the way to the ground plane. So it actually discharges perfectly fine. So let me get you set up real quick and then I'm going to show you how we discharge. Alright, we're back guys. So, uh, just so you know, I do believe I have some other issues going on with the high voltage here. I can't confirm all that yet until I replace a couple of resistors that I know are bad 
on this monitor chassis. But looking it up quick, I think this monitor should be producing somewhere between like 12, 13,000 volts, upwards of 17 to 18,000 volts. And as you saw, it's producing 30 plus thousand volts. So it's definitely not working the way it is, or supposed to be. And that's probably what's causing my entire issue. Uh, so I, we may end up using this as a how to change a flyback video in the future here. We'll find out. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to discharge this thing. Okay? So the key to discharging a monitor is first you need to turn it off. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and unplug it. You can hear that discharge of that high voltage in there. So, at this point, using our broken uh, high voltage probe, we're going to go ahead and clip our alligator clip to our chassis, so it's basically set up on field ground. And then we're going to go ahead and move you a little. And the high voltage anode right there. We're going to touch that with the high voltage probe tip. And that's going to take all the charge. Well, I'm sorry. Not all the charge. There's still going to be a little residual charge left. Okay? But it's going to take the majority of the charge. And it's going to send it right to field ground. Essentially, discharging the CRT. Now, this being a Wells Gardner K7000, if you wanted to, you could wait anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes after you power it down and unplug it and it'll self-discharge. But even that, I don't trust, and I'll still go ahead and do the discharge procedure. All right, so this is how we go ahead and do it. I got it hooked up to the ground already, and I'm just gonna go in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and discharge. You didn't hear a pop because the whole self-discharging worked. And you can use your probe or whatever you want to, that's discharging it to pop the anode right off. Of course, be careful, don't have your hands in the way because there could still be a little charge in here. I like to go up and touch right inside the anode hole here. Make sure that's as discharged as it can be. And then, of course, touch on the anode socket here. Make sure that's discharged. Now I know that, I can disconnect my ground prong. And then kind of show you what I was talking about with this whole anode. All right, you see that? It's like little hooks. Uh, there we go. So that's what I was talking about earlier. You need to be careful when you test the high voltage in general because if you were to undo that by accidentally pushing one of those little clips to the side, well, you're going to have a bad day. You know, even if it doesn't touch you, it could short out on the chassis or anything like that, and you're just going to have nothing but problems. So that's how you go ahead and discharge a CRT, and you do it safely. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm not going to show you the other two ways that I do it, because in all reality, yes, they've worked for me, but they might not work for you, and I don't want you to get hurt. So you either need to go online and buy an actual discharge tool which is essentially just like the high voltage probe where it goes into your field ground and it's got a special like heavily insulated probe that is stuck underneath the anode cup and that'll help discharge the CRT. Or if you have a high voltage probe that happens to be broken as in the meters broken but you still got a connection from the tip to the ground you can use that, and it's going to discharge it just fine, as you can just see. I had no issues whatsoever. Now, just want to make a note here. That little anode hole there, even though we've discharged this, this tube is still going to collect a charge, especially over time, with static in the air, things like that. If you stick your finger in that hole, that hole right there, you stick your finger in there, you are going to have a very bad day. You're going to completely regret it. Will it kill you? Eh, it depends. You know, I mean, I've done it, being stupid, and it just hurt. I couldn't feel my arm for hours after. Some people may have a weaker heart or just not be able to handle it, and they, yeah, you could get severely hurt or die from it. So respect the CRT. 
These are very dangerous. And if you're not comfortable working on one, don't do it. Send it to somebody who is comfortable doing it, okay? All right. Now that you've seen how to test the high voltage, which, as we've already seen, this one seems to be going a little too high. If you guys think 30,000 plus volts is good for this little 19-inch monitor, let me know. I'm pretty sure it's not. From what I've looked up, it should be a lot lower, almost half that. So we got some issues going on, and we're going to try our best to fix them, okay? Not only that, but I showed you how to safely discharge one of these. And this is going to be common through all CRTs, okay? Well, all that I've ever worked on. If that's another thing people want to note in the comments, please do. Because if there are types of CRTs out there that need to be discharged in a whole different manner, or shouldn't be discharged at all, let us know. It's going to be helpful. So, I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. And like I said before, we've got a few videos coming up here that has to do nothing but CRTs. We're going to learn how to clean them. We're going to go ahead and fix some problems. We're going to diagnose some issues in general. And we'll just go over some stuff, alright? But until then, have a great time. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video, guys.